All right, so welcome back, and we are now finalizing thermal physics. So here goes. Convection, conduction, and radiation. Heat travels in three main ways. Conduction, convection, and radiation. And as you can see here, the different types. So we're going to get into it. I don't want to start right away. I want you to just ease yourself into it first. So we're going to talk about convection and conduction first. These are the two, these are two ways in which heat can travel. Conduction is the flow of heat through matter from places of higher to places of lower temperature without the movement of matter as a whole. An example of conduction is basically heating up a metal. Most metals are good conductors of heat. Materials such as water, glass, cork, plastics and fabrics are bad conductors and we call those insulators. Metal objects below body temperature feel colder than those made of bad conductors because they carry heat away faster from the hand even though all the objects are at the same temperature. Liquids and gases also conduct heat but only very slowly. Water is a very poor conductor of heat. In this picture, you will see that there's an ice cube at the bottom held on by a weight arm mass. And uh, what's happening is that the top of the water is being heated. So two things are poor conductors of heat. One, glass is a poor conductor of heat. Two, water is a poor conductor of heat. So it's going to take some time for the water to heat up. Eventually, everything is going to reach to thermal equilibrium, but not right now. Uses of conductors. Good conductors, they are used whenever heat is required to travel quickly through something. So let's give an example of an appliance that is a good conductor of heat. Right, pots. Now bad conductors or insulators are bad um, because they don't, they don't transport heat well. And examples of insulators are wool, mittens, um, paper, Things like that, wood, uh, rubber, you know. Now here we have, why are hollow blocks used to build the walls of houses? Well, hollow blocks will contain air, right? And air is a bad conductor of heat. So, in times when it's very hot outside of the building, it won't get that hot on the inside because the air trapped inside the hollow block would be unable to conduct heat into the house whereas if it's very cold on the outside and inside is warm and toasty the heat stays inside the house and the heat won't be conducted out of the house or away from the house so that's why we use hollow blocks to trap air which is a bad conductor of heat and it just keeps the house nice and toasty in cold in times that are cold and nice and cool in times that are hot Two processes occur in metals when they are heated. In metals, the electrons travel faster and cause electrons in cooler parts to vibrate as well. And two atoms in hotter parts of the metal cause atoms in cooler parts of the metal to vibrate. This happens in nonmetals as well since nonmetals do not have free electrons. Now, while conduction happens in more of solid, uh, solid materials that are of a solid nature, convection occurs in fluids. And a fluid can be considered a liquid or a gas. Give an example of such, and we see here the picture of water. Convection is the flow of heat through a fluid from places of higher to places of lower temperature by movement of the fluid itself. In convection, a fluid floats within a fluid, not a solid in a fluid. And remember, hot air always rises. Black marks often appear on the wall or ceiling above a lamp or radiator. And this simply happens because we have convection currents. If you look at the picture on your right, you realize that you have the heating happening in circular motion and so the hot air will rise and remember that in air there are dust particles so the higher up the hot air rises once it touches on the ceiling 
a uh, piece of wall or something like that. The dust particles go with the heated mass of air and they stick to fibers that may be in the ceiling if you have a ceiling or the roof uh, and door, right? And so that hot air carries the dust particles. That is where you would have those dark marks in the house. So ever so often you just wipe it down. Hmm? Convection currents set up by electric, gas, and oil heaters help to warm homes in cold climates. Many so-called radiators are really convector heaters. You know, um, natural convection currents actually take, you know, they occur all the time. And we experience them without even knowing that we experience convection currents. And one of which are um, earthquakes or the movement of tectonic plates. Because of the magma that is underneath the Earth's crust, there is uh, convection currents happening in that heated rock. Remember we said convection happened in fluids? But just imagine now that we have fluid rock. It's basically melted rock. It's so hot that the rocks become melted. And then in there, because it's a fluid, you have convection currents. These convection currents cause tectonic plates to move. And so, that is why you have earthquakes. Now, if you look at the picture I have here, I have the earth, and I have it with all the little cracks. The earth is basically like a cracked egg. There's a bunch of plates that we all live on, and they move ever so often. It's not a big shift, but the shift is... Uh, North worthy enough to cause an earthquake. So that's one of the natural phenomena of um, convection currents. The next one is breeze. Breeze is caused by convection currents, whereby we experience sea breeze in the day because land cools off or loses heat faster than the ocean. Remember, we learned that a while ago. So the land loses heat, goes up. And then it goes in a circular motion which causes the sea breeze to come inland during the day. And at night, when the water of the sea cools down or loses heat, then we experience land breeze. So by day, we experience sea breeze. And by night, we experience land breeze, as you can see here. Now we have some questions. Explain why newspaper wrappings keeps hot things hot. Well, that's because newspaper is a poor conductor of heat, and so the heat is not transferred away from the food. Fur coats would keep their owners warmer if they were worn inside out. Well, fur is a very good insulator, and so because it's a very poor conductor of heat, it works better inside out, trapping the heat, trapping the air inside, everything like that. That keeps you nice and warm and toasty. So it doesn't transfer heat away from your body, it keeps it trapped. A string vest keeps a person warm even though it is a collection of holes bound by string. Well, depending on what the string is made of, if it's wool, it would actually do its part by trapping some sort of heat. It's, it's a poor conductor, number one, if it's made of wool. And it will keep you warm um, to some extent, right? Why is a glass bottle likely to crack if boiling water is poured into it? Well, again, glass is a very poor kind of heat. And in pouring the hot water in the glass, the bottom of the glass stays very hot for a long time. It doesn't travel towards other parts of the glass uh, fast because it's a poor conductor of heat. And because of this, the bottom expands faster than the top, causing the bottle to crack right yeah when a vessel of water is heated at the top why doesn't the water at the bottom warm up well again um, water in this case is a poor conductor of heat and so it will take some time for that heating for the atoms to be activated and heat up so it's a poor conductor so it doesn't conduct heat very fast it will take some time Convection currents stop us from being suffocated when we are asleep in bed. Why? Well, convection currents, um, first of all, air is a fluid. 
and if we're heating up the air inside of our room then the air would move in circular motion which enables the air to move about so you don't feel like you're in stagnant air and it's you know in out in out it's just circulating so we can breathe easily why is the freezer compartment on the top of the refrigerator well hot air raises so from the refrigerator the hot air that moves up uh, we could think of it in both two ways hot air rises so that hot air reaches up into the freezer um, it will cool down due to the, the, the cooler parts of the freezer are you could say well the freezer um, well again hot air rises so remember whatever coolant is in the back of the refrigerator will remove the latent heat from the freezer and then if there's any cooler air well there will be if the air is much cooler that air will definitely fall down and keep the refrigerator section cooler so you could think of it in parts like that so you could think of it in parts like that right so convection takes place only in solids only in liquids only in gases in solids and liquids in liquids and gases e okay radiation Radiation is the third way in which heat can travel, but whereas conduction and convection both need matter to be present, radiation can be transmitted in a vacuum. Evidence for this is provided by the fact that in some electric lamps, the radiation emitted as light by the filament travels across a vacuum in the glass bulb to get out. Radiation is how heat and light reach us from the sun. So we know that space is actually a vacuum. Also mostly through a vacuum, so that's space right there. And we have the electromagnetic radiation that leaves the sun. Here we have it, and we start off with radio waves and microwaves and infrared waves, then visible light, ultraviolet light, then we have x-rays, and then we have gamma rays. Radiation travels as electromagnetic waves. What happens to those waves when they fall on an object? They either get absorbed or they bounce off, depending on the type of object it is. Radiation is the flow of heat from one place to another by means of waves. Radiation is emitted by all bodies above absolute zero and consists mostly of infrared radiation. But light and ultraviolet radiation are also present if the body is very hot. For example, the sun. Here it says, give some examples of good absorbers of heat and bad absorbers of heat. Well, we could guess the bad absorbers. We know what they are. Cotton, wood, rubber, plastic. Metals for good absorbers of heat. Also concrete. Concrete, you step on concrete. It's so hot. Now, good and bad absorbers of heat. Dull black surfaces are better absorbers of radiation than white shiny ones. What are shiny surfaces good for? Exactly. Reflecting heat, reflecting light. Why are buildings in hotter countries painted white? Exactly. To reflect heat, right? To reflect it away from the house, to keep the house cooler. Some surfaces also emit radiation better than others while when they are hot. The cooling fins on the heat exchanger of a refrigerator are painted black so that they lose heat more quickly. Then we have here, why are teapots and kettles able to keep their heat longer? Well, they are made of conductors, number one, and some teapots and kettles are painted black on the inside which is able to keep the heat inside, right? So all of that. Sometimes the insides are also shiny, which reflects the heat back on the inside of the water as well. So you can look at it in different ways because um, teapots are different worldwide. You have glass teapots, you have metal teapots. So 
It depends. You just have to state what type of tip I'm talking about. But remember, in this section, we're speaking about good emitters of heat and bad emitters of heat. So whatever um, explanation you use, it must make sense. Right? So in general, surfaces that are good absorbers of radiation are good emitters when hot. Two other factors that affect the amount of radiation emitted per second by a surface are its area and its temperature. Increasing either of these increases the radiation. Now here we have some effective uses of radiation. Here we have a vacuum flask which actually um, is really good and let's look at the mechanism. So with traditional containers, heat or cold find its way inside through the process of convection. Thermos of vacuum insulation creates an airless space between two walls. And here you see them sucking out the air between here to make it a vacuum. So this is the matter. We call this matter, right? Virtually eliminating the convection process and temperature change, right? And so your drink will stay icy cold or steamy hot no matter what the forecast is. Note well that in here is usually shiny. And so whatever is hot in here will reflect the heat back into the substance. Or um, if it's cold, it would just stay cold, right? Effective uses of radiation. Here we have a glass house effect. When the sun shines, we have some rays, electromagnetic waves, shining or leaving the sun and entering the glass house. Now, the heat is then absorbed by the soil and the plants and everything that's inside of there. But the heat, right, that enters the ground are short waves. Okay? When the plants and the soil emit radiation now, when they give off the heat that was actually absorbed at one point, some of it is able to leave the glass house once it's, at, um, it's a long wave. Um, long waves of electromagnetic radiation, right? However, infrared rays would radiate from the ground and they cannot pass through the glass. So this set of heat is trapped. This is what happens because glass is effective at trapping these infrared radiation. It's unable to leave. It keeps everything in there warm. And that's why in places like Iceland, they're able to grow crops that don't usually grow in these places, right? Because the soil will be barren from coal. They're able to grow crops, tomatoes and all these other things like lettuce and um, yam and thyme and all that because of the effectiveness of the glass house, which is able to keep the um, seeds warm. So the warmth from the sun is not cut off by the sheet of glass, but the warmth from a red hot fire is. And simply because they say, why is this so? Well, just look at what it says here. It says that infrared rays radiated from the ground cannot pass through the glass. So red hot fire must have some type of infrared rays. So they cannot pass through the glass, right? So that is why you won't feel the effect. Now, light and short wave infrared rays from the sun penetrate the glass house, which is known as a greenhouse, and are absorbed by the soil, the plants, etc., raising their temperature. These in turn emit infrared radiation, but because of their relatively low temperature, this has a long wavelength and is not transmitted by the glass. The greenhouse thus acts as a heat trap and its temperature rises. Great. What does the presence of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere cause? Right. It causes the earth to warm up. Right? So, solar water heating. Can you explain how these work? Just looking at the picture. You are definitely correct. So, basically, cold water is pumped up to where the solar panels are. And they're usually they're painted black. They're always painted black. And so when the sun hits on them, the black causes it absorbs a lot of heat. So when the cold water is pumped up through these um fins, right, they heat up 
naturally and so this hot water is then pumped back down well not pumped back down it comes down on its own down 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 to the pipes and then guess what guess what we are able to get hot water to the taps okay so the water that is in here in the tank will heat up so the cold water is at the bottom and then this well yes so basically there's a tank of water and so when we have water being pumped in through the pipe right there that is used to heat up the water inside of the storage tank once the water is healed up enough is heated up enough it will travel or be pumped out to the taps. What does the presence of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere cause? Yes, it causes global warming, one, but it also causes acid rain. Now, effects of CO2 in the atmosphere. Once acid rain accumulates, in the environment it can cause a pH change in open bodies of water and here we're going to um, investigate the ocean so an ocean is an open body of water and just think about ponds and lakes and stuff but focus on the, the, the ocean floor once carbon dioxide mixes with hydrogens inside of water you get something called carbonic acid that carbonic acid will change the pH of the water. Marine animals are very sensitive to pH changes. And so they'll be affected by these pH changes. So will coral. Coral is actually living. And coral is very sensitive. We thought fish were sensitive. Coral is sensitive. And so because of this, coral would stop um, would stop producing and they will literally die. They will basically go through something called bleaching, turn white and they will just die. And coral is actually a home for fish. So imagine your entire home dies. You as fish now have to deal with the harsh acidic environment. Now you have to look for a new home. What's going to happen? Everything dies out. So that is why we have to be careful with our emissions into the atmosphere. You know, so we're supposed to walk more, ride bicycles more, all that jazz, right? And so, here are some questions before I leave. So the first question is, we feel the heat from a coal fire by. Now, we have convection, expansion, radiation, conduction, diffusion. And uh, I would say radiation. Radiation, um, and it also depends how close are you to the fire. So if you pick convection, that means you're not very close because you're saying that the heat from the fire would have heated up the air and caused the air to become warm through convection currents. But we're talking about direct contact. So I'm going to say radiation. Now three cans of identical size and shape. One can is painted matte black, one is dull white, and one is gloss white. The cans are filled with boiling water. In which can will the water cool most quickly? Yes, the white, the one that is dull white, sorry, gloss white. Because number one, the gloss white will reflect the heat. It's um, a poor conductor of the heat anywhere. And uh, yeah, glass, glass reflects heat away, right? <clears throat> the only sad part about this question is that they didn't say it was glass weight on the inside or glass weight on the outside. So I'm gonna take it that it's glass weight on the outside. It reflects the heat away and so thereby cooling the water most quickly. Give a reason. Psh there I have it. I gave my reason. So just make sure when you have these open-ended questions and you're going to give a reason, make sure your reason makes sense. And um, yeah, make sure your reason makes sense once you pick your point. All right. That's it for me, folks. Oh, I thought it was done. So three, why does radiation pass more readily into a glass host than out of it? Well, 
because what's going in can pass through glass the the electromagnetic waves the type of waves can pass through glass but when the soil and the plants heat up they produce long wave IR radiation or infrared radiation which is unable to pass through glass or leave the glass so more heat enters um, a glass or than it leaves the earth has been warmed by the radiation from the sun for millions of years yet we think its average temperature has remained fairly steady well this question was written a good amount of years ago so the answer would have been for that is that we didn't experience much change like we haven't experienced melting of polar caps and stuff but obviously we, we are now experiencing the changes in temperature and the rise, the rise of the ocean water and stuff like that so this question is kind of obsolete in my opinion right so why is the temperature less likely to fall on a cloudy night and on a clear one well clouds are in well i'm gonna say i want to go deep clouds are made of water well gaseous water water is a poor conductor of heat and so it will be able to trap the heat into our atmosphere down here right keeping the night really warm on a clear one there is no barrier the clouds act like a barrier and so on a clear night when there are no clouds the barrier is gone and basically heat leaves the atmosphere right it's able it's free to leave and so thereby making the night a little bit cooler and that's the end of thermal physics I'm glad you joined me through this journey and I'm happy that we made it to the end. See you around for ray optics, rays, light and everything. So that's our next topic. Bye for now.